What's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's no secret that Lenovo has a brand new handheld on the way, and it's actually going to be launching next month. This is the Windows-powered Legion Go S, and it's using the Ryzen Z2 Go chip. It's actually a custom chip specifically for Lenovo from AMD. And in all actuality, what that chip is, is a 6800U with only four cores and eight threads. So in this video, I wanted to see what kind of performance we can expect out of the Legion Go S with Windows installed on another handheld that has a very similar chip. This is the AOK Zoe A1. It's their first gen product and it's powered by a Ryzen 6800U. But what I've done here is actually disable four of the cores. So now we've got a four core, eight thread part with the same 12 CU RDNA 2 iGPU that we're gonna see in the Legion Go S. And so far, with all of the benchmarks we've seen online from the Z2 Go, I mean, this matches up almost one for one. So I do think that this is going to give us a good idea of what kind of performance we're going to see out of the Legion Go S. And right now, the Legion Go S is up for pre-order over on Best Buy, 729. And with this, you're going to get one terabyte of storage, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 8-inch, 120 hertz VRR display. And overall, I do like the look of it. Again, I went hands-on with it for a while at CES. Feels good, really nice controls, the screen looks great. But at the time of going hands-on, we were only able to test out a few select games, and I'm really interested to see how the Z2 Go really performs. And heading over to AMD's official website, they've got the announcement for the new Z2 series chips. If we move down here just a bit, it does give us a lot of information. So right here we've got the Z2 Extreme, this is the one that I'm most excited about. Ryzen Z2, and of course we've got the Z2 Go. This is what we're going to be trying to test out today. Four cores, eight threads, up to 4.3 gigahertz, 10 megabytes of cache, AMD RDNA 2i GPU with 12 compute units, 15 to 30 watts. Basically the AMD Ryzen 6800U with only four cores and eight threads instead of eight cores and 16 threads. A little bit lower clock there, and we don't know the exact clock on the iGPU here, but we're going to kind of guesstimate and get really close to the performance we're going to be seeing out of the Z2 Go. And as soon as I get my hands on one, I will be doing a comparison, but I'll tell you, I think we're going to get real close, and in fact, we actually might get a little better performance over here than we'll see on the Z2 Go once it launches. Jumping right in here, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 6800U, and I do believe that this is what the Z2 Go is based on. This is usually an 8-core, 16-thread part, but I've disabled 4 cores and 8 threads, so we're at a 4-core, 8-thread CPU now. One of the main differences here between this and the Legion Go S is going to be the RAM amount. This unit only has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X running at 6400 MHz. The Legion Go S they have listed up on Best Buy's website has 32 gigs. And of course, we've got that Radeon GPU. This is actually the 680M. 12 CUs based on RDNA 2. So in all actuality, I mean, we're looking at the same kind of specs here. I'm not sure if they're going to shrink the die on that or not. But either way, we've got four cores, eight threads with RDNA 2 graphics. Now another thing I used here uh, to kind of get the power that I needed, handheld hardware tools from Project SBC. I'll leave a link in the description. You can pick this up on GitHub. Just makes it really easy. Nice overlay here. We can adjust the TDP. And uh, with the Legion Go S, they're saying 15 to 30 watts. You could boost the TDP if you want to, and we've got some EPP adjustment. But even if I go here to active CPU cores, you can see we've only got four. So yeah, at least on paper, the way I've got this set up right now is right on par with the Z2 Go chip. And just to give you an idea of how close I got these by disabling the cores, over on Geekbench's website, there are some Z2 Go benchmarks listed for the uh, Legion Go S. Single core, 1,620. Multi, 5,427. And on the 6800U with this AOK Zoe handheld and four cores disabled, single core, 1,693. Multi, 5,716. Really close scores here, and you know, if we were to run these back to back on both devices, I mean, we could come out real even in the end. But another benchmark that recently leaked was a Time Spy benchmark for the Legion Go S. And again, I do want to reiterate that these are early benchmarks for the Go S, but it's looking like a 2,296 in Time Spy, which isn't a super high score. And over here on the AOK Zoe with those four cores disabled, 
2,405. And just like Geekbench, if we ran these side by side, back to back, we could come out with a really even average across the board there. But now I want to move into some real world gaming with this AOK -okay Zoe. And the first one we have is Spider-Man Miles Morales 1080 low with frame generation on. And I am at a 30 watt TDP. I want to get the maximum performance out of this thing. Right now it's not looking too bad, but we did need to enable frame gen because even at low 1080 with a little bit of FSR, even using IGTI scaling, we got some dips under 60. So yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but as soon as you drop it down to 900p, you're good to go. I also wanted to test out Fallout 4, so here it is at 1080 medium settings. Not too bad, couple dips here and there, but if that frame counter wasn't on screen, I wouldn't even notice it. And one good thing that we've got going with that Legion Go S is it's got that VRR display. So if and when that frame rate does dip down pretty low, we're not going to experience any frame tearing with VRR enabled. Four cores, eight threads with that thing. I, I was a little unimpressed when they first announced it. But I mean, I kind of see where they're going with it. I just wish the price on the Windows version was a bit lower. And the final game I have here is Cyberpunk 2077, running this at a 30 watt TDP, 1080 low settings with FSR enabled. I believe I've got it set to performance right now. And you can see from Afterburner, we can't break that 60 mark. In fact, it kind of goes well under there. So in order to get it over, we do have FSR 3 frame gen built in. And what I did next was just drop it down to 900p. So on the Legion Go's uh, 16 by 10 display, it would be 1440 by 900 on this it's 1600 by 900 and we're seeing averages in the mid 80s with frame gen enabled and just given the specs of that z2 go i think a lot of people are going to rely on these amd technologies to get that frame rate on up there now personally i don't mind playing a really good game at 1080 30 and with the z2 go most of the AAA stuff is going to run just fine at that and with and and you could even jack the settings up to medium and high depending on the game if you're shooting for a 30 fps mark so in the end i think that this is going to be real close to the performance we see out of the legion go s at least the windows version and of course they do have a steam os powered version coming up that is much cheaper using that same z2 go chip if you're interested in seeing, you know, SteamOS running on a 6800U with four cores cut off, just let me know in the comments below. And as soon as I can get my hands on a unit with a Z2 Go, I will be making a ton of videos, and I will kind of throw this back in there, just a comparison with the benchmarks and everything that I've been running on this AOK -OK Zoe with that tweaked CPU. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I'd love to know in the comments below, are you thinking about picking up the Windows version of the Legion Go S? At that price point, they have it listed at right now over on Best Buy, or are you going to wait for the SteamOS powered version, or just skip them all together and wait for something more powerful down the road? Let me know in the comments, and like always, thanks for watching.